everybody, it's Crystal Ann Compton. How are you doing today? I hope you're having a beautiful day wherever you are on the planet today. I wanna to say thank you and hello to all of my subscribers. Thank you for liking this video. Thank you for sharing this video and thank you to my patrons as well. You guys are my heart ball, lit up, all red, ET phone home, mahalo. Thank you, thank you, thank you. In this video, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the difference between meditation and prayer. Both of these are what we'd call spiritual disciplines or spiritual practices. And both of these things are really important and they're important because they help us to develop our connection to the divine or our connection truly to God energy and to the I am energy, which is the higher self energy. Meditation does this by allowing us to be in the space of that divine energy, whereas prayer deepens this connection by allowing us to interact more dynamically and to communicate with that energy and that energy to communicate with us. But let's break it down because I really want everyone to understand how important it is to the spiritual seeker to develop these two disciplines in the life. Because if we can do it, if we can practice this, if we can make this a ritual and a habit, we will transform our understanding. We will transform truly our vibration, especially with meditation. So let's start there. What really is meditation? I talk to a lot of people out there in the internet about meditation, and what I hear most of all is that people think it's hard. People say, well, Crystal, I spend the whole time just trying to bring my thoughts under control and trying to quiet the noise in my head. I don't feel like I get anywhere. In fact, if anything, I just get frustrated. And I understand that because sometimes when I meditate, that happens to me as well. We all have busy lives and the mind is always filtering the things, the events, the aspects of the life through itself. And when we sit down to meditate, it can be more difficult to get those thoughts to fall away but it's worth it. It's worth it to persevere through the struggle of meditation. I often tell my students that if out of the 30 minutes you spend in meditation, 29 of those minutes are spent in struggle and frustration, dealing with the mind, the ego, those 29 minutes are still valuable. In fact, they're invaluable. Why? Because they send a signal. They send a transmission to the universe that tells source energy, tells higher self, hey, I'm here. I'm going through the process of making this connection. I want to be in this space with you. And you know, intention is so powerful. Intention is so powerful and it's always received and returned to us by the universe. Keeping in mind, of course, the universe never judges our intention. The universe never judges the signal. It just says, aha, I received that. And I return unto you in accordance to the quality of that signal. And so when we're in that meditation, when we're going through our motions, clearing the mind, coming back to center, noticing again another thought, clearing the thought, coming back to center, that is a signal of intention that I'm going to be here that I want to be in communion and in relationship with source energy and with the higher self. And when we signal to source that we want to be there, that we want to be in relationship or partnership, source never says no. God never says no. God never says, you know what? I have an appointment right now. Maybe we can talk about this next week. No. Source being omnipresent and omniscient shows up in those moments right where you are, meets you right where you are, and blesses you. And this is how meditation works. Soon, if you make a practice out of it, a discipline out of it, you'll find that those 29 minutes of struggle turn into 25 minutes of struggle, and then 20 minutes, and then 15 minutes, and soon it's 10 or 5 minutes. And soon you'll find yourself that you don't struggle at all. Instead, you just kind of slide, electric slide, right into the sweet spot of meditation. Oh, that's where the good stuff is. That's the nectar. That's the nectar of the name, the sweet spot, that space where we can feel in our vibration that we are proximate to source energy. I like to liken meditation to 
an old married couple. These two people have been married for many years, so long, in fact, that they don't really need to talk to each other. They don't have tons to say every single day, but they know each other. They recognize each other and they prefer one another in a deep and abiding way. Maybe at the end of the day, in the evening, they're both sitting on the couch. He's sitting there reading his book. Maybe she's sitting there knitting or crocheting and they're not saying much, but they're communion, but they're communing. They are commingling their essences and this reinforces their partnership. That's what meditation is. We don't really have to be saying anything in meditation. In fact, usually the goal is to say nothing and to let these things fall away so that if God wants to speak, God can use that space of our silence to give us a message or not. Sometimes it's just perfect hanging out with source, the vibration of source and the vibration of I am. That's the nature, my friends, of energy, divine energy. When two energies come together, both energies are always impacted by that interaction, of course. However, the stronger energy, the more powerful and dominant energy always makes a more substantial impact on the lesser energy, always. In fact, the impact that this dominant energy makes is that it forces that passive energy to acclimate or to adjust up to the level of the dominant energy. Now, when we're sitting down on the couch next to source energy, the creator of all things, the source of all miracles, that energy we would call God energy, which energy do you think is more powerful? Which energy do you think is going to make the more substantial change to the other? Well, source energy will. If we give ourselves the time and the space to sit down next to source energy on that proverbial couch like that old married couple to commune with source energy, it gives source the chance to change who it is that we are on an energetic level to change our signature, to force us in this 3D human incarnation where our vibration is so much different than source energy. It is, and that's by virtue of this dimension and this life in which we're living. But if we meditate, you see, we give ourselves the opportunity to acclimate, to adjust higher. The higher in vibration, the closer to God. The closer to God, the more we become like God. And what happens when we become like God? Well, our lives become populated with the attributes and the traits and the characteristics of the most high. And these are not human characteristics, as I'm always saying. No, they're not. They're divine characteristics. They're God characteristics. Things like prosperity and unconditional love and peace that surpasses all understanding and healing and wellness and success. All of this comes from source energy. You see, all good things come from God. And when we make the time through meditation to just sit on the couch like that old married couple, well, we give ourselves the opportunity to ascend. That's why meditation is powerful. That's why if you don't have a meditation practice, you need to have one. If you're a beginner, if you're just starting to key in to this spiritual business out here, I would recommend that you try to meditate for maybe 15 to 20 minutes, maybe three to five times a week. That's a great place to start. And you'll notice you may struggle a little bit and you may notice you may be kind of having to correct yourself, get back to center. That's okay. Persevere. And as you can, add minutes or add days and expand your meditation practice because the longer you are there, the more opportunity God has to change who it is that you are and those attributes start showing up in your life. That's meditation and it's important. Now let's talk about prayer. Prayer, if you will, is that same married couple, just not on the couch, saying nothing, just hanging out together. He's reading a book, she's crocheting. Rather, they're out in the town. They're out on date night. 
They're at a nice, beautiful restaurant. They're sitting at a table. He's leaning in. She's leaning in. They're talking. And she's saying, well, how was your day, my sweet? What did you learn today? What did you experience? And he talks to her and he shares with her. And then she responds and she shares with him. And the relationship through this interaction of communication is allowed to go deeper. Communication comes from the word communion. Thank you, Tina Gorino out there in New York City for reminding me of that because it's powerful, isn't it? Communication arises naturally from communion. And what is communion? Communion is sharing on an intimate level, on a deep abiding level, and it's usually spiritual. And when we share like that, with our partner, or in this case, when we share like that with God and with our higher self and with our emissaries, what rises out of that, what is given life as a result of that is communication. This two-way language that we have with spirit where we can just talk. That's all it is. A lot of us came up through organized religion and we were taught to pray specifically. Well, you gotta get on your knees. You gotta genuflect, you gotta shake around. You gotta worship, dance, you gotta do whatever you gotta do to pray correctly. Well, I'm here to tell you that's not how it works. There's no correct way to prayer, to pray. Just as there's no correct way for me to have a conversation with my husband. I mean, we just talk. I don't have to be formal. I don't have to put on certain clothes. I don't have to come in with certain errors. I just get to talk to him because he loves me and I love him. And sometimes we play around. And sometimes I joke with him. Well, I joke with him a lot. Sometimes I'm walking around the house singing jingles at him and he's rolling his eyes. Oh, here she goes again, singing those jingles. Other times I want to sit him down and I want to say, listen, Jeremy, I've got this vision. I feel this power, this energy. I see something coming and I want to share it with you. I want to co-create this with you. I want your help. I want your insight and your advice. That's communication. And that's what we're entitled to as spiritual beings with God. We're entitled to have conversations with God. We can speak casually. We can speak formally. We can even speak angrily. I talk to my emissaries all the time, quite angry when things aren't working. I'm kind of mercurial from time to time. I am. I'm kind of like, oh, Lord, I get in my feelings about things, but I share that with spirit. It doesn't antagonize my relationship with source. In fact, it deepens it because I'm comfortable to share all of my aspects with source energy. And in doing so, and in allowing this life of communication to arise from the communion that I seek, I go deeper, or if you will, I go higher in my spirituality. It's so powerful. I walk around the day all day long talking to source in my heart, in my thoughts, and often out loud, kind of like a crazy person, when you look over at the car next to you and she's just chattering away, that's me talking to Michael, talking to my I am or my infinity selves, talking to my future self or my past self, talking to, to the self that I seek to be, I speak to it and he calls the unseen as if it were and the unseen becomes seen. Man, I'm always talking to divine energy. I'm always communicating. I'm always celebrating in this communication the relationship that I have with source energy and therefore my relationship grows. That's prayer. Meditation and prayer are complementary one to the other. They're different, you see, but they're both aspects of a beautiful and intimate relationship. Let me conclude by reminding you that The higher you go in vibration, however you get there, through meditation, through communication, through practices and disciplines, the higher you go, the closer you are to your higher self and to God. And the closer you are to God, the more you become like God. The more you are filled, literally, with the light and the love of God the more you're able to shine that light into the world and be an agent for God and for your higher self and for Gaia. That's how you do it. Meditation and prayer are two of the most powerful tools you can use to raise your vibration. And that, my friend, that is some good news.